Welcome to another video by Ferros Technology. Today, I want to talk about how I took a form that would only accept one field for search criteria and show you how I took it from one field to multiple fields by using a bit of VBA code. So let's get started. First, what needs to be done on this particular form? The top row that you see here is funded by a query. Now, the query takes requirements or search criteria from each of those seven fields. But the problem is it would only accept one of those fields, and I wasn't able to expand that query to take multiple fields without being able to give the flexibility of choosing any of those multiple fields, leaving some blank and filling in others and searching in, in that way. So I needed to make it flexible enough that it would accept any field that was filled in versus any field that was not filled in. So I needed to have VBA come to the rescue. So what elements did I need to have in order to make it work? First, I needed to use DAO to gain access to all the objects on the form. Second, I needed to set up a, a group of variables that would build up the sections of SQL code that pertain to each field that was filled in. And then I also needed a miscellaneous variable such as a counter. Third, I needed to assemble the VBA code. And fourth, I needed to rebuild the query underlying to match the data input on the form. And then fifth, I just at that point needed to refresh the form. So let's see how I did that. So the first element was setting up the DAO. That's at the top of the code here, right under the private sub as a starting point. You'll notice that I dimension MW books for the database. I also dimension a query definition called QDF lookup. And then I set DBS MW books to point to the database that I have on the hard drive for Merchant's Wagon. It's the database I built for the Merchant's Wagon used bookstore. The next thing that comes along is the variable setup. You'll notice that I dimension several variables that have similar names to the search criteria fields in my form. This naming convention allows me to understand better where the data is coming from and which piece that I need to write next. I also set all of the those variables to null values. So you can see where I set SQL main equals to double quotes and counter being set to zero to make sure that I had a good base to start from without any ver values in those fields. So the next part to do is that I go ahead and assemble the SQL code. Oh, that's a little bit small. If my editor will take and move me into the other corner and I can make this a little bit bigger, aha, that's better. First, I assemble the SQL main variable. This is the part that is unchanging in the SQL. It contains all the, the select statement and all the joins that get it all set up for the where clause that's coming next. The next thing I'll do is to check the value in the ISBN ID text box to see if there has information in it. If not, I'll go ahead and pass on to the next one. But if it does have a value in it, then I'll go ahead and assemble that piece of SQL code. Now at this point, if it has data, I'll go ahead and set up the counter to the counter plus one, and then move on to our next if then statement. The last one was pretty simple. Coming up with what you see got a little bit more complicated. The search container field, for example, is a text field and not numeric like the ISBN ID. I could just slip the value in for ISBN ID because it expected a number. Because of that, I needed to, to add these funky looking quotation marks, those triple quotation marks after the table stock location dot container equals and before the last parenthesis on each line. So that took a little bit of searching to get to the point where it would accept a text value as input rather than a numeric value. Once I figured that out, I had to figure out the next portion of the SQL if it had already been found 
that ISBN had a value and created SQL there, now I had multiple criteria situation. So I needed to go to a, to put an and before the next SQL. Um, so in this section, you'll notice that there's an else if line where it checks to see if the counter was greater than zero and then slips an and before the SQL statement. And if it doesn't have a value greater than zero, it goes on to the else statement and does not put the and in there. Once I figured all that out, it pretty much became an assembly issue after that. So in assembling the SQL code, this was the next step. Notice that if counter greater than zero, meaning that I did find some criteria in the code, I would then assemble the SQL code. Then I had to fiddle around a little bit to know how the WHERE clause should be represented. So that uh, is it in quotes in the open paren. And then you have to assemble all of the other variables, some of which, of course, are empty variables because there wasn't criteria for them. But nonetheless, they're part of, of it in case they have criteria. If they do, they'll have pieces of SQL code that fit in there. If they don't, they'll just be blank and it'll pass on with a little bit of white space. Then I closed it out with the close paren and the semicolon, which finished out the SQL code. Now here is the code for the assignment of the SQL code to the query definition. You'll first notice that I deleted the old query definition. Then I created a, a new query def with the same name and assigned it to a QDF lookup variable. Then I set the QDF.SQL equal to S multifilter which assigns our assembled SQL code to the query QRY QBF books look up, book look up for shipping. Then all I had to do was get the form refreshed. And I tried several methods to refresh the form. And the one I came to rest upon was closing the form and then reopening the form uh, that the query def had already replaced for the look up for shipping query. So that all I had to do was open the form and it would automatically look at the query because it was the query built from the criteria that was set. So after closing out the database elements, I ended the subroutine. And what you'll see next is how it actually runs in real life. So I click the shipping button, and then I'm gonna go ahead and put in King for the last author and hit the filter. And you can see that it, it'll accept one variable like it could do before. Now let's put in two. So I put in Stephen King and hit the filter button. And you can see now it filters down to just Stephen King. So let's go ahead and put in a bin number where we keep some of the books. I'll put in C51, put in Stephen, put in King. And when I hit the filter button, you see that it takes all three. I did do some validation testing then to check all of the other variables the same way, putting one in each one, then putting one in a couple others and so forth and so on. Just trying to mix up several combinations and, and all seven worked as they uh, were expected. So by this, I was able to create a multi-field filter backed up by SQL code. And you saw that it worked pretty quickly. Uh, once I hit that filter button, you saw it come back just right away. So amazingly easy when I finally got it all done, a neat kind of project for uh, when I needed multi-fields uh, multi uh, to filter. Now. Upcoming, I'm also going to be putting out other videos that are going to show you different variables to searching multiple fields. I plan on two more videos, so watch them. Uh, they'll be coming out soon. And I, I really appreciate you watching. And so if you found this video valuable, please hit the like button and let's get it out to more people. Consider subscribing and we'll continue to put out more valuable lessons in the future. So hope to see you then. Thanks.